Welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about putting that figure in your abstract painting. Now, you remember the last one, I showed you about doing abstract figures, very simple, turning them into carrot people. Remember those, how silly that was? But boy, is it ever effective. We did black and whites, then we added some color, but then how do I get that information into my abstracts? I have some here that I'm working on right now. You can see here that I've got the big top. This is part of my series of the circus people. I started off very, very abstract, very abstract, playing with color and scraping and scratching and lines and drawing. And then all of a sudden, it's time to make it look like the circus. So I added figures. It shows the scale. You know you're in a big area. You've got trapeze hanging down and it's still abstract color. You think you see something, but you really don't. And the only thing that pulls you in that is scale and it's a circus, you see performers sitting here. How simple that was to add that. It makes it come alive and tells the story. This one over here is about couples and their relationship. I started with my color wheel on this one. Strictly mostly purple, right? Green's the focal point. Purple and this blue were the focal point, were the uh, two spice colors. Bam, 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 bam. See how it all came together as an abstract? And then I said, oh, we gotta tell a story. It's about a couple, a relationship. Did the negative shape painting right here. Whoa, it's falling, and falling down, there we go. And, and, and then adding more of the figure in there. It pulls the whole story together, all right? Over here, this one is all about waiting, waiting. Now there's your carrot, but now it's zigzag carrot, right? Me, me, me. So it looks like someone's sitting down. Add the color that I wanted, very sophisticated, and that person he's waiting for. Now, how do I do it with my abstracts? Well, here's one I just did a few weeks ago. It's mostly collage, mostly collage. You can see some of the figures in here already. And I did monochromatic on this one. Now, I'm going to hold this up and stare at it for a while until I see the figure that I really want to project. But it will be very much like the things we just got finished doing in the last Bob Blast. I'm going to get started on this one. So this is my process. It may not be everyone's process, but this is what makes me happy in my studio. Painting's already dried, monochromatic. First thing I'm gonna do is actually put a stain. Right now it's just grays, blacks, and whites. So my stain, oh, look at that. Wonderful, huh? Now these are transparent colors. See, I haven't lost anything underneath the design. Certainly the color, it's not the color I want anymore. There we go. Now I have this beautiful, almost like a hand red stain in here. That's the color I want. Now, what's fun is to take some isopropyl alcohol. Doesn't matter if it's 70 or 90, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and finding the figure in here. See, it takes the color out. I think I love where this is going. You see? Almost like negative shape painting. Right? Wow. Now I had an idea when I first did this. I had people up here and people down here. And now it's time to develop the concept. This is still part of my circus people, performers. Now to get that single figure in here. Here we go. Get rid of all of this. Wet my brush, always wet my brush. Lots of color. We're going to make this fun. Mixing up some acrylic paint with a lot of water. Here we go. Remember, this is my circus people. So it better be fun and entertaining. Also remembering that carrot. Hang in there with me. This is only step two. There are many steps, as you know, <laughs> in an abstract. Actually, in all paintings, right? 
This is where I actually just play with ideas. Silly ideas. I don't question myself. I just keep on painting. Whew, this is crazy, isn't it? Now, in the clown face, the clown face, oh yeah. And now, pretty silly clown. I'm gonna keep on drawing. Because I can, I love this kind of drawing. Notice where I'm holding the brush in the back end, not up here, here. That's why brushes are long, <laughs> so you can hold them further away. See, I haven't really lost a whole lot of the stuff that's underneath here. I'm going to simplify the background right now. I'm going to do that by lots of transparent color. And when it's not transparent enough, start wiping it away. See? I think you can see how this is developing. Big brushes, always big brushes. There we go. When it gets really dark, I like to start scraping and scratching and drawing. Because for me, the surface is lots of cable and lines and trapezes, safety nets. Go to this surface. Again, this is all about putting the figure into your abstracts. Let's see how it augments my story. I knew that I was going to be doing something circusy. In case you forgot, there you go. Pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> now I'm going to change it slightly back here. I'm going to decide to have a different color back here. Oh, yeah. Adding lots of white. Whew. Simplifying the background now really emphasizes the single figure. And there's something else going on over here. Just like the circus, there's always something going on. There we go. I'm gonna go even darker a little in here. Oof. And bring this color up into here. That's why I like mixing sometimes right on the paper, but get in and get out. Don't stay there too long, It'll, it will turn muddy. So I like to look into a painting and see all kinds of other things going on underneath. I like to see the hand of the artist working it out. So that's putting a figure into an abstract. It's pretty loose, wonderful to have painted, large brushes, clean colors, get in, get out, don't stay there and start tickling it to death. I hope you enjoyed this series. I love doing the figure in my abstract paintings. Hey, thanks for watching and sharing, and I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Hi there. Hey, this is just a reminder that I'm doing two major trade shows coming up right now. Artisan Materials Expo, and it's in Santa Fe. Who doesn't want to go there? September the 28th 
to the 30th. I'll be there teaching all day long. One more trade show I gotta tell you about, and you've been hearing me say it for almost a year now, Art of the Carolinas. Jerry's Artorama, you know that big catalog? Well, they've got a big art store and they have a major convention trade show in Raleigh, and that is in November the 8th to the 11th. You've got to sign up early because everybody's there. Why do a trade show? Major deep discounts and art materials. That's where I get my stuff too. Okay, people come with their trucks and then they just load up. You get to meet a lot of fabulous teachers. You're gonna learn more techniques from all of us. And then, you know, there are little lessons all and demos all day long. It's great to be with my people, artists just like you. I can't wait to see you there. And I hope to see you in almost every class. Hey, sitting next to these palm trees reminds me of the January workshop coming up here in Puerto Vallarta, 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico in January. It's a beachside village, fishing village, a working village. We're, we're having a fantastic time down there. I do it every year for many years now. And we all go down there and fly down. They pick us up at the airport. They take us 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta to get out of town. And that's where we meet all the other artists and we stay in one casa. It's fantastic. They feed us, they wine us and dine us. And the beach is right there. The atmosphere is wonderful. I do some of my best work there because we stay on the top floor that overlooks the entire beach area, the villa and the ocean. You'll see whales dropping all over the place. It's fantastic. I hope to see you there at Casa de las Artistas. I wanted to say it right, in Mexico. See you then.